Hello there, this is well, uh, Hello there, this is Red McNed, and welcome back to the saga. There are two things of importance today. That are very important importance. One is the going onings of uh this place. There's gonna be more uh more farms and stuff. The other is a little bit of a extra secret super surprise special fun time thing. There, I think I left it ambiguous enough that I didn't give it away. But hopefully, I built up the mystery and I stick around for it. It's going to be a bit of uh, getting the story together for the town and possibly finding another place to start building. So, first things first here. That was not going to work. It was a bad idea then, and it's still a bad idea. <laughs> I guess it grew some cactuses, so I'm cool. But I think that we can do better. Do much better. So what seems to have happened here is two platforms have appeared. So, hmm, very interesting. I think we should check them out. Whoa, I think I should also be careful. <laughs> I've been known to just simply run off cliffs for no reason. <laughs> for seemingly no reason. So this is a very typical tree farm. It's going to be not fancy, it's just going to be for growing trees. These are the trees you got, and you need to find a way to grow more of them since the old tree farm turned into a very nice looking, uh, less functional, however, uh, place in the village. So to do this, as the sign said, it's 35 by 35. There's just a solid layer of cobblestone on the bottom, and then on top, I sort of have it designed where every three spots there's a torch. I have this area over here basically to catch anything that falls. So if I decide that I'd like to plant some 4x4s four or anything that's a big tree, I could do something like this. And if I want all the leaves, then I can space them apart like this. And there's not too much crossover or carryover. And I think this is a good distance, having it three or more, or two in between, just for the sake of leaves, because this isn't just a tree farm for wood. I also need leaves. So if I can just remember what part of the square it's always in, then I could always just plant a tree there. I'm also not sure if a torch right next to one of these keeps it from doing its thing. But in the meantime, that's this area. Uh, that'll uh, that'll be good for uh, getting some more uh, getting some wood. And let's jump over there. I was speaking figuratively, but the more I look at this gap, the more I want to try it. Okay. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I have a long time to think about, as I fall, I have a very long time to think about what I've done. So here, right next to it, it's kind of the same thing. There's a solid cobblestone. Uh, I believe this is 9 by uh, either 18 or 17. Oh, well, the, the length isn't important. This is going to be where the cactuses go. So I'll put these here. I think that this will be where stuff gets collected. Hopper, of course, is a chest. I'm holding down the right click button, by the way. And all those irons. I'm going to hold shift down and point these in there. Have this one point into the side. So that's the secret about hoppers, is they have to point toward the surface you click on. And I have to hold down shift on these, otherwise it'll just open the inventory. So, it would appear that that's going to be the lowest part of this farm, so this all needs to get filled in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this should be where the bucket goes. So, just as a test, make sure it flows the correct amount. Yep, that's good. And to make sure that remains good, I'm going to go ahead and start the next shelf here, because I think this will be a shelf type setup. And these are probably going to have to move up. 
I'm going to do this as easily as I can by making a flat slate here. It's going to have one distance around wherever there's a uh, a dirt. I know, wherever there's there's the water. And it's going to rise up here. Or rise up. Now that we're playing checkers, we can go ahead and put one of these on top of each. Basically, the cactus is going to go here. Once it grows up a level, it's going to get viciously attacked by those. And that seems to be a good spot to place them because that hits both of those circles. I want to put them right in these, basically. One last one. Yep. And as an added bonus, this whole thing is spawn proof. The collectors seem to be collecting. That's exactly what they're meant to do. And this sign can't stay here forever, sadly. There we go. The first farms. Well, I guess that was technically the first farm, but you know. On to uh on to bigger and better things. And I kinda like having them stagger up and build up. So it'd be like a, almost like a bowl shape, possibly hanging out around this. I think that'd be cool. Just like a bowl fly, f flighting, floating in the air. Uh, and also one more word on these. Torches cannot be here, even. They can't be anywhere, any of these spots. Because once I took those away, all of these started growing. And before that, they simply did not. They did not. Also, flirting with danger. <laughs> Don't let a tree grow on you. It's bad for you. Oh. Oh, maybe I was closer to danger than I, uh... But now that we're done with the first part, we can go on to the second part. It's time for story time. Something that I would like to uh, incorporate a little bit more into this series is uh, if it's supposed to have context and uh, stuff and backstories, well, everything that's here, I should probably give them. Or, like, you know, a loose interpretation by myself, maybe. So, without due, wait, without further ado, the first story of this town is the story of the map makers. There's many. P people in the town, many professions, but these two villager individuals lived over here in this town, in that house over there. And map making was a secret hobby of theirs. They, they had regular jobs in town, but it was really a, ta a hobby that seemed it was frowned upon and also the thing that eventually got them in trouble so what happened is they the town is all they have to stay here basically that's why the walls are here the the big person person in charge is uh passing down the rules of old that says no one can leave this area all these lands outside are forbidden however these two were curious, and they ventured off. They ventured off into the mountains, and they found that castle. They found other things, and they ended up keeping journals, which that'll that'll be a fun thing to, to figure out. But ultimately, one time, one day in their adventures, they were caught. And they were caught because their map room was discovered. So they made the map room. The map makers made the map room. Only one of them was caught that day. And they were quickly brought up here to trial. And the town knew that the penalty for going off and venturing into the Forbidden Lands is death. So up here on this wall was the judgment ceremony. Where the towns and people... Gathered below and voiced their their complaints, their critiques, their infinite wisdoms, 
their um, their ultimately though the voice of the one who was mainly in charge rung out with the final verdict not necessarily happily but because they had to kill him we do not want to incur the wrath of the gods there was a bit of a panic he didn't know what to do he was brought over to the wall to be thrown off and killed or something but just then there was a glow from inside the town this house had caught fire the townspeople were panicking they didn't know what to do and in the rush and the panic and the chaos there was only one chance for this brave villager to escape their fate as an aside I'm not going to simulate the fire since the entire town is made of wood and that would be stupid also it took an entire town to put out the fire as the legend turns. The villager managed to release from the grip of those and did the unthinkable and courageous and stupid act of escaping the town the only way you knew how. In order to understand this, you have to understand the town. It's a bit superstitious, you could say. Religious, perhaps. Spiritual, maybe. But they just look at the facts. The facts is, are that these lands were never really that hospitable to begin with. They brought a lot of death and destruction. You could just look across the wall and you can see all of the zombies. It looks terrible. And any time that anybody ever went to the castle, it always ended badly. Any time the roads were ever opened up for commerce, it always ended badly. Sometimes massive amounts of destruction and people's lives were lost. In the end, the individuals became closed, closed-minded, afraid of the outside world. And who could blame them? And after all, ever since they adopted this policy of seclusion, they became very safe. Not much happened. The ruler person helped out everybody. Everyone, that is, except for this person. Or people like this person. The villager fell through the leaves, obscured. It was not to be noticed. He was assumed dead. Since these lands were known for their hostile hostility. At this point, it's only speculation, but it's believed that the villager only managed to stay survived by fighting off mobs with a single carrot. Others were a bit more hopeful. They thought that maybe he could be resourceful, possibly start a fire, and stay safe. Although, in a place like this, those rumors were only limited. Eventually, people forgot about the villager. The story is only remembered by the children as just a simple little thing. Since both the villagers and that household were considered dead, since it burned down and the other one fell off, basically off of the world to everybody. <laughs> but this is not a funny story, maybe. Maybe it's a good story, though. For there's one such hope that perhaps... This villager stumbled across, or upon, another civilization. One that could exist outside of the walls, despite everything that the village was taught. This land would be the new world, or a new world. A place of new beginnings, new sunrises, metaphorically and literally. For the darkest of days for this individual... Or behind and although they would miss this old their old home their old land the truth was they would never be able to go back although perhaps one day it would be united the two villagers for perhaps they didn't both die that night perhaps more happened than people think <laughs> Figures the most dangerous thing that would happen would be at that point. The most hopeful part of the story. 
Wait, what the? Oh. Well, this was the pristine location that I thought would be the new, and I still think would be a good new place. A new location. So basically, this series has all taken place in that one area. The thing is, Minecraft goes a lot of places. And I think that if this story is going to keep going, it needs to incorporate more lands. And whilst walking around, I stumbled upon this place. Doesn't it look gorgeous? Here, let me show you around. So one thing that's interesting about it is that there is an ocean on this side with great coastal cliffs. There is a river going through here. And on the other side, the river goes out just across there, but there's another ocean and more amazing cliffs. And check this one out. Oh, maybe I should... Yeah, whatever. So this is like a peninsula. It just keeps going this way with ocean on this side and ocean on the other side. And just a mountain range that kind of goes off. And the mountain range looks really cool. Like, there's all kinds of uh, stuff like this. This is probably the coolest, uh, coolest looking one. But there's all kinds of other stuff. And there's, like, canyons and uh, other things. If you come over here, you can see more cliff-like things and the opposite coastline. Yep, just really cool uh, coastline. And if you follow the said coastline, besides finding a bunch of sheep, just climb up to the top of this mountain. And we have the end of the line. So this, uh, this mountain range decided to go straight into the water, basically. And in here. Now, what I like about this is it seems like there's got to be something really cool at the end of this. Like, if there was a village that was at the front of it, and this was sort of like a um, a mystic mountains, or like a magical mountain range or something, then they could be like the protectors or the keepers over there. And this could be like some place that people go for pilgrimages or something. And what exists on the end, who knows? Like... Who really knows? It could be in the water, it could be in the sky. I don't know. This this is actually kind of exciting. I I don't know. Maybe that could be a good spot for that whirlpool. Uh -huh. Something. Something mystical must happen here. It must. As a disclaimer though, and just to clarify things, I'm not done with the other town. There's way too much stuff I want to do. Like But Oh yeah, like the they haven't finished the castle yet, that whole under area. There's supposed to be the secrets under there that are this, the reason why the people got forbidden in the first place. And that they discovered. They discovered the secrets and then they got kicked out. Or attempted killed. Which is a little bit more harsher than kicked out. But I need to tie that all together. And then there's going to be story elements that are going to be associated with two locations. This is why I'm really excited about having a second place going. Because... They can have interactions or non-interactions. The fact is that they can know about each other and that could actually, like, then you get a history and maybe you have, like, policies. They have, you know, what they think about each other. They like or dislike each other. And especially if one of the other place individuals escaped to this one, escaped their execution and came here then that could lead to some interesting uh, stuff, I think. So I'm actually pretty darn excited about this. In fact, I'm so excited that I'm going to give it a gold star. A big gold star. Because I like it that much. So I think that'll have to be enough for this episode. I'm happy that I at least got to um, add a little bit to the farm, add a little bit to the story. Because it's uh, this is the first uh, story element. Hopefully, many more to come. And uh, I'm not gonna try to make them too complicated, although uh, no guarantees on that. 
but it's just kind of a way to make this more fun and more interesting for me, and hopefully for uh, you all, anybody who uh, enjoys that sort of thing. I think it'll really give me motivation and, and perhaps hope. Hope for a better world. A new world. A brave new world. A new hope. <laughs> so next time I'm uh, in this location, it's going to be big, major happenings, goings-ons, and we can get a town set up. We can do it fast and do it proper. Or not proper. Just something. Something will happen. I'll just say something will happen if I'm here again. That's 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 what I can I can guarantee. I guarantee it. So anyways, this has been Red McNed. I hope you've been enjoying the episode. And I hope to see you in the next one too. No, I'm innocent, I tell you. Innocent no What the hell is that? What is that?